Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 26th, and it is going to be a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. In the 40s now, but we're going to have sunshine and temperatures up to 60 degrees today. So very nice. Fortunately and unfortunately, that means I get to do yard work today. More on that later. I uh, don't have a pipe yet because I'm going to smoke a new pipe and I'm going to show that new to me pipe and I'm going to show that off and talk about some tobacco and whatnot. But let's get started with the pipe so I can load it up and start smoking it. Uh, got a package in the mail this week. Got two packages in the mail. We'll, we'll talk about both of them. Great week. <laughs> in terms of pipes and tobacco, this has been a very good week for me. Uh, this came from uh, my buddy Doug Owen at the Cargo Hold. Uh, wasn't expecting a box. There was a box. I thought, what the heck is this? And Doug is just a kind and generous man, and he sent me this. I don't know if you can read the bag there, but look at that. That is a Sassini Four Dot. It is the Buckingham shape, which is a nice uh, billiard shape. My favorite. I love this pipe. I mean, Doug obviously has seen me smoke enough pipes to know exactly what I liked. And Doug just decided that I needed a Sassini. He said that all pipe smokers should have one, and uh, now I do. So thank you, Doug. Uh, very kind and generous of you. And uh, man, it, it is just beautiful. I am so, so happy with this. Uh, I smoked it already. I smoked it yesterday. Um, actually, was in a, uh, chatting with my friend uh, Tim Fournier. Uh, and he has a Sassini 4 dot that I've been rather jealous of, and that's what kind of led to a discussion during a live stream, which I think is where Doug got the idea. Uh, so we both now have the Sassini 4 dots, and we we enjoyed a chat yesterday and smoked them. Uh, so I put Haunted Bookshop in it because that's what I like to have my first pipe experience with, or to break in a pipe. Now this pipe is, uh, it's an estate pipe, uh, I believe it's one of Doug's pipes. And so I didn't really need to break it in, but I wanted to smoke the Haunted Bookshop first just to understand how the pipe performs. And man, I was blown away. This this pipe performs beautifully. Uh, now, Doug said that it really likes Virginias. So, okay, <laughs> we'll give it some Virginias today. And what I'm going to be smoking is some of this Peterson Irish Flake, which I first opened during the St. Patrick's Day live stream because it is Irish. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna load some of this up. Already done a pretty good job of delving into this tin. I like it. I'll see if I can get a full flake off here to show you. They're they're very nice flakes. Well, here I'll just pull the whole thing out. They're very nice flakes, but they're kind of stuck together because this has some age on it. Uh, but here we go. Yeah, mostly intact. Get an idea of what we're what we're dealing with. Some beautiful, beautiful marbling in that. Set this down for a second. So this is um, a blend of Virginia, Burley, and uh, Kentucky dark fires. And this is actually from, I believe it's 2017. I will look at the date after I load the pipe and confirm that. Um, so it's been in my cellar for a while, and I'm going to talk about this, but from what I read, and I just did a little bit of research this morning, I mean, I've been smoking this quite a bit for, for two weeks now, but did a little research on it this morning. By the way, just rolling it up into a little ball, that's how I usually deal with flakes, and we'll just pop that in the bottom, let it expand, and then we'll follow it up with some more. Um, Doing some research this morning, this blend apparently has changed, uh, changed a year or two ago, and it's now is more uh, dark fired forward, Kentucky forward. The Burleys are less prominent, and from what I understand, the uh, the strength is also much less the nicotine strength. Now I I don't really get nicotine so I can't tell you much about that but I've had no issue smoking this you know I smoked it several times now is my last smoke of the day just before going to bed and you know, had no problems uh, smoke it in the morning I haven't had breakfast yet 
We'll see if I turn green, but it, it just doesn't bother me. Nicotine doesn't bother me. But this blend, what I can say about it is that it has wonderful deep flavor. So it, it's strong on the flavor scale, uh, but in a very good way. A little bit more. I like to try to get some of the little pieces that have broken off and put them on the top, sort of as kindling to get the, the flake going. And that's how I that's how I pack flakes. So it's it's two of those rolled up pinches. Second one I poke down a bit more, and then some some of the drier stuff from around the edges. Seems to work pretty well. This does have a light topping on it. I can't tell you what it is, but uh, it's nothing overbearing. I would certainly not call it a aromatic in any sense. And that is from yes twenty. Wait a minute. Sorry, old guy, got to put the glasses on. Yep, 2017. So unfortunately, if you try this and you get a newer tin, it may not be the same thing. But let's light her up. Yeah, just a slight hint of that topping. And it's almost like a... It's going to sound weird, but it's like a fruity anise, or anisette, or anise, however you want to call it. Um, and it's got that tiny tinge of that licorice edge to it, and then it's sort of sweet and fruity, uh, almost peachy. But it goes away almost immediately. There we go. Oh, they got my Larry Blackett Maltese Falcon out. And thank you, Durham Duke. Uh, this pipe just it's it's got the you know I hate to say this because I you know I've got a lot of pipes and and many many of them are are wonderful pipes uh, this one just has the best draw on it it's like no resistance at all and uh, hmm. Doug has made me a Sassini fan, and now I'm going to probably want more. Darn you, Doug. Mm. And this pipe does like its Virginias. So the, the Irish Flake, at least in this version, it's a really nice balance of Virginia and Burley. The Burley's a little bit in the background, so you get the Virginia... Uh, the, the the sweetness of that, the the sort of hay hay, I hate to say barnyard. I hate when people do that, but that's what it is. Yeah, grassy. And the dark fired in this case is done exactly the way dark fired should be done. It's there. It's just under the radar, it's providing a lot of depth and sort of a basement for the blend. Every once in a while you get that little smoky barbecue-y sweetness that comes up, but it's not like, you know, blends like Old Dark Fire or something, that's all you get out of them. They're very monotone in their flavor profile. This is just providing that base and occasionally it reaches up to say, I'm here. Uh, good stuff. I was very disappointed to read this morning that it has changed because I was thinking of getting some more tins of this. I may still do that. Just to do the comparison. But uh, this is nice. Well, 
I told you you got two packages. Mm, lots of smoke. Two packages. Um, because the next day, actually that's not true, it was, it was yesterday. Um, so it was two days. Yesterday I received a package from uh, Smoking Pipes. I, thought, I didn't order anything from Smoking Pipes. And thankfully my wife wasn't home because she would have sworn that I ordered something from Smoking Pipes. But what I received was a card. And the card simply reads, Mike, I hope you enjoy these blend these tins. The beast is for you to try as it features Perique. So somebody knew I like Perique. And this was a mystery. It's unsigned. I don't know who this is from. I know now. So a tin of the Cornell and Deal Small Batch Beast. And a tin of Warhorse Bar. Now, you might recall that I was smoking. Oh, that's the wrong tin. There it is. Too much tobacco. Sorry, Isabel's barking. I was smoking this Warhorse uh, Ready Cut on my live stream. This was another of my Irish blends for St. Patrick's Day, and I smoked this last week on my Sunday video. And during the live stream, I mentioned that I had not had the bar version yet. And we also, I believe, talked about the Cornell and Deal the Beast. And I said, yeah, I probably wasn't going to try it because I don't usually try the small batch blends. But uh, someone was paying attention. Uh, and it turns out it's my buddy, Eddie, um, uh, Texas Piper. And he kindly sent me both of these. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying them both. As soon as I get through a lot of the tobacco that I've got open right now, because I... You know, opening those blends for St. Patrick's, they put, really put me over the top in terms of what I normally like to have available, uh, or at least open. So we will we will enjoy those, though. So thank you, Eddie. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Doug. Um, your, your, your kindness, both of you, your, your kindness is, uh, it humbles me. I will find a way to uh, to repay that kindness in time. I say that, and I and I really do mean it, Isabel. I really do mean it, but it's it's not easy, you know. People are so generous, and uh, it, I've got to find a better way to uh, to thank people. I frankly feel undeserving of, of the generosity at times. Um, but I, I do appreciate it. I don't know why she's barking. She went out just before I came down here, so I know she's okay. But I'm not going to remake the video. Ah, it's good stuff. My wife is still in Pittsburgh, which is part of the reason this is going on. Isabel, be a good girl. She's not going to hear me because I have the door closed. Hey, Google, broadcast. What's the message? Isabel, be a good girl. Let's see if this works. All right, broadcasting now. It's just broadcast. I've got this speaker down here, and I've got three others throughout the house. So when that happens, it sounds to her like the voice of God. Oh, it didn't work this time. Ah, oh, well. So, uh, where was I? 
Wonderful tobacco, wonderful pipe. Beautiful weather today. I got to do yard work. Our lawn guy is is starting, and that means I got to get the backyard in shape, and I got to do it because I think he's coming Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and this is it's been raining for since Thursday. So the yard is going to be a soggy mess, but such is life. It's not that bad, to be honest. I mean, I've got some, some sticks I've got to pick up. Uh, you know, branches have come down and stuff, so i got to pick those up. And uh, just make sure, you know, because stuff blows into the yard over the winter. We live in a corner, on a corner house, and we've got a school across the street from us. And you wouldn't believe the number of like candy wrappers and stuff like that that, that I find from uh, from the, the kids at school. It just we seem to be in the right spot to collect stuff. When when it's fall and the leaves are coming down, we get most of the neighbors' leaves. Yeah, you know, it's fun stuff like that. It'd be nice when you were buying a house if you could try it out for a year just to see how it handles all the weather and and the wind patterns and things like that, but. Truth is, by the time we were here a year, we were pretty well rooted. I don't move easily. And I've got a garden problem already. So I planted seeds um, last weekend. Yeah, last weekend. And one of the seeds I planted, and these are just in those little... Um, pods that you start seeds in. Maybe I shouldn't have started these because uh, they're radishes. And these darn things sprung up, I mean within two days they were three inches high. And now they're like really tall and spindly and they're falling over and all. So I'm going to try to transplant those into larger, um, larger pots with some soil around them and see what happens. But I don't know. Uh, probably should have just seeded them when I planted the other uh, the other thing. I've got some interesting stuff this year. Uh, I've got some heirloom tomatillos. We'll see how that works out. I also have some leeks. My wife likes leeks. She makes a really nice um, soup with uh, leeks and uh, tortellini, which is really delicious, and chicken. What else am I growing? Got radishes. I got a couple of peppers. I've got I've got uh, some banana peppers. Oh, and I'm I'm trying some shishito peppers, uh, which our CSA has shishitos, uh, and they're I like them a lot. They're really good. If you haven't had them, you just uh, I just roast them for a little bit with some oil on them. Uh, they're just they're really delicious. And supposedly every once in a while you get a really hot one, and I don't know that I've gotten a really hot one, but I still like them. And we'll plant some beans, plant those from seeds. Hopefully the rabbits won't strip them this year. And we usually make one trip to the, uh, there's, a, there's a garden center here that's a really wonderful garden center. It's run by a uh, Mennonite family. And I love, I love going there because the, you know, the women behind the counter all have the traditional, um, Mennonite clothing and the, and the little bonnet on and they're just inspirational religious posters hanging up and stuff and it's just you know it's a family-run business and it's it's almost like stepping back in time a bit and they have really good quality uh, plants so we'll buy some flowers and I'll usually pick up a couple of I don't know maybe some last year we got some zucchini and some eggplant I think the rabbits took out the eggplant pretty early, but we, we did get a couple of zucchini. If I ever had to be a self-sufficient gardener, um, I'd fail miserably. I'd starve. I'm no Cliff Higgins. Cliff, you're a farmer. <laughs> Cliff has incredible, an incredible vegetable garden. Uh, 
I'm going to try something different this year. I think I told you guys last year that the soil got really hard on me in, in some places. So folks suggested mixing in sand and peat moss. I'm going to, I usually get a, uh, some compost and mix that in, but I'm going to do the, the compost the sand and the peat moss and we'll see if that loosens up the soil and uh, maybe makes things more productive. Oh, one other thing I'm growing, and this is, this is kind of cool. I'm, I'm growing some sweet potatoes. I pulled out a sweet potato the other day that uh, my wife had apparently forgotten about and, uh, it had little sprouts coming off of it. And I remember seeing that you can like cut these out and, and plant them. And I thought, well, what the heck? So I, I've got three little sweet potato plants going right now. Never grown potatoes or sweet potatoes. I have no idea how, how that works, but I'll figure it out. And again, hope the rabbits stay away. My goodness, this is just, Doug was right, this pipe loves Virginia. The Virginia is really coming out nicely on this. And you know, it's funny, when you get a an estate pipe, you typically don't have that break-in period where you have to you know, wait for 70 or whatever bowls and everything, but it does take time to become yours. You know, sometimes there's a ghost in it that you have to smoke out. Uh, that's not true in this case. At least not that I've noticed yet. Um, but it just takes time for you to know the pipe, to be comfortable with it. But this one feels like something I've smoked before. Still not quite mine, but... It's, it's very close. So the wife is, in theory, driving home today. I have not heard from her yet, but she's a late riser. I expect she'll get in around 8 o'clock tonight. And uh, the dogs will be very happy to see her. They've missed her. I've missed her, of course. But, but they really miss her because... Uh, the phone's buzzing right now. It's not important. They really miss her because she's she's around all the time. You know, she'll she'll go out, but she'll only be out for an hour or two, and then she's back. Whereas I leave for eight hours at a time, and they're alone, and they just don't like it. Well, friends, I've probably been your year enough for one day. I'm going to enjoy this pipe. Have some breakfast, and then I'm going to go and uh, go out in the yard. And uh, start the spring. Make it officially spring. <laughs> so, I hope you all have a great Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.